part of that. Amen. So we're praying for our mission.
Will Jesus find us watching? We'll sing the first, the second, and the fourth verse. Page 70. Bible with you tonight. 
Joshua chapter number three, and we're turning to a familiar passage. In fact, we read this on uh, the night of Thanksgiving, the night before, I should say, and uh, we talked a little bit again about this scripture, and we read and gave thanks for what the Lord has done, and now we're going to look at the second part of this passage, uh, again, looking at the future and what the people were getting ready to experience, and of course, this is the journey of the people of Israel through the wilderness, and so now the torch has been passed off from Moses, and the torch has now been passed to Joshua, and now Joshua is leading the people, and if you were to look and, and find Joshua here in Scripture, you'd find him young in his ministry and leading the people of Israel. So lots of questions and lots of, I'm sure, doubt and, and, and different things were going around the people. And so this was a great time of trust and a great time of the Lord's provision in the people of Israel's life. And so we're going to read a bit, and then we're going to, of course, draw application for our lives. But look with me in verse number one of chapter number three, and we'll read through and, and read a few verses. It says this, the Bible does. It says, And Joshua rose early in the morning. And they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then shall you remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. Verse number five, and Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant before the people. And the people said, I'm sorry, the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Let's pray. We'll continue on with our thoughts this evening. Lord Jesus, again, grateful to be here. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather in your house. I pray, Lord, because your scripture is opened, that you would bless this church. I pray, Lord, that your wisdom, I pray that your knowledge, your truth would reign out tonight. I pray that it would be shown forth in our hearts. I pray, God, that these scriptures and these chapters and verses, Lord, be committed to our hearts again when we come to places of hardship or trials or tribulations, Lord, that we have your word to lean on. And your word is a foundation. So, God, we pray again that these truths are committed to our hearts. As the Bible says, that we hide them inside of our hearts. And so, God, we pray that we would draw great strength from your word. Tonight, we pray for your truth. We pray for your strength. And, God, as we look back on what you've done, we thank you. We look forward now to your vision for 2021. And, Lord, we're very excited to serve you. We're a very grateful people, Lord Jesus. And we're looking forward to your leadership in this next year. We love you. Lead us now. In Jesus Christ's wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you this. It's, uh, it's been a, a wonderful year. I know it's the, the very last Wednesday in 2020. This is the last service that we'll have inside this year. The next time I'll see you, I'm not going to make the joke. I won't do it to you. Everybody will make that joke. I, I won't do it. But, uh, of course, we'll be back on Sunday, and it'll be a new year. Amen. It, it'll be a new year, 2021. And I tell you what, 2020, I don't know about you, has flown by. It has gone so fast. I know some say, no, it went so slow. We were quarantined. I tell you what, we've been so busy here at the church. It has gone so fast. It's been wonderful. And I tell you what, the Lord has moved and done. And, man, wonderful things here at this church. If you did not join us on our Thanksgiving service, I just want to recap with you a few numbers that we pulled. And I told you it'd be brief. I'm talking 30 seconds of just some recap of what we've been through this past year. But let me just remind you some numbers here. That we had over 20 souls saved in the year 2020. And I tell you what, that is amazing. That, that is wonderful. Now, now, again, you look at those numbers and say, man, no, over 20 is not much uh, given a whole year. But I'll remind you again with the lockdown and, and the pandemic and visitors not wanting to come to church and, and, and on the reverse side of that, people not wanting us at their doorstep and all the, all the different things that would hold us back from witnessing. And yet over 20 souls were saved in this last year. I'll give you this number as well. Over 18 people, the, the numbers even moved up since the last time that uh, we gave that statistic. Over over 18 people have joined the church this past year. Uh, we had five baptized. So I, I, I tell you this, the church has grown and the Lord has moved. And, and truly, you could say the year 2020 has been a great year at Victory Baptist Church for the Lord. There's nothing I can complain about. I don't think that either of us, uh, I'm talking you and I, I don't think we have anything to whine about. I don't think we have a, a complaint in the world for the Lord. He's been so good to us here at this church and blessed us 
and brought us up and, and, and brought us even to new heights now where, where we're doing great and the church is really uh, uh, just a, a wonderful place to be right now with how good things are going. And so I tell you what, I've got nothing but praise when I look back at 2020. Yes, we've got a, a, a pandemic. Yes, we had a, a virus and, a, and, a, and, and all these quarantines. But I tell you this, it's been a great year. And I look forward to 2021, just knowing God's protection through this past year. I look forward to what God's going to do in 2021. I'll tell you what I was doing today. I was in my office and, and doing some work and, of course, studying for tonight. And I noticed one of my, uh, there's a little handle on one of my drawers. And it's been loose for some time. I, I don't know. It's just a, it's a little disc and it's got a screw on the other side. I looked before and I couldn't find the screw. It's behind something. So you had to take something apart to get to the screw to tighten it to finally. So anyway, I, I had a, a couple seconds. And so... I finally did it. I finally just took the drawer apart and I got in there with a the screwdriver and tightened it down. And as I was doing that, I noticed a few things about the desk and I noticed where the handle falls that there were some divots from how many times that handle had been lifted and dropped. I noticed that there were some wear marks from where the, the feet of uh, men who have sat there have, have again caused a, a, a wear on the desk. And I, I just noticed that the desk was used and it brought me to this thought as I was reading through scripture as the torch was passed from Moses to Joshua. I don't want to negate the history of Victory Baptist Church. Amen. And we'd be a fool to look at the history of the church and say, well, there's been some hiccups. And so therefore, we're going to neglect it or negate it or not talk about it. And here's what I'd say to you is I think we'd be fools to do so. And here's why. Because the Lord has built a wonderful church. Amen. And the Lord has used some men in, in some different roles for some different lengths of times with some strengths that they've had. And the Lord has built this church. Amen. He, he's brought souls. He's brought families. And, and the Lord has truly built a, a wonderful church here at, in Batavia, Ohio. Victory Baptist Church is a, a great church with a great heartbeat. And I tell you this, though the church has seen some challenges and seen some different things, I praise the Lord for all the history that's wrapped up here inside this church. I noticed all the, the little divots in the desk and again where that handle fell I just knew somebody had opened that drawer so many times and and it got me thinking back to some of the things that I've heard and, and I know with you and I we go back to the good old days the glory days right when the church was great when the church was good I go back to my days in Marysville when I was young and just newly saved I was learning I was growing so rapidly I had such a love for people I was witnessing working at the church and Man, as I think back on my spiritual journey, those were some of the, the most wonderful days I've ever had as a, a Christian. Such wonderful times. And I know you have, have, again, those days. And often I hear a Victory Baptist Church right back in its heyday when, when, when 200, 300 people were here and people were being saved left and right and people baptized all the time. And, and Brother Bill Allen, I, I've heard all kinds of stories about that guy and, and, and some of the, the trouble, I mean, some of the, the good things that he did here. And, and I tell you what, the, the church has been through so much, but... I just want to remind you something, that God is still with Victory Baptist Church. Amen? God is still with it. And though, again, men have moved on, and, and, and though the Lord has brought different folks over the, the times, the Victory Baptist Church is still a, a growing church, a, a church that is doing well. And again, the Lord has a bright future for Victory Baptist Church. I think that easily we can get the mindset that the Lord did, the Lord has done, right? The Lord was moving. The Lord moved. But our mindset needs to be the Lord is going to move or the Lord is still to do or the Lord still has more to come. And here's the verses again that I was reading as I was pondering on some of these thoughts. I want you to see this. Look at verse number four. It says this, of course, concerning the ark. It says, yet there shall be a space between you and it. Now, we're not very fond of space right now, are we? Right? Six feet apart, everything. We're, we're not fond of space right now, but, but just put this thought in your mind. There shall be a space between you, about 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it. And here's why, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. Now I tell you something, we've come through a unique year, a year that for some has been uncharted territory. In fact, I don't know really anybody who was prepared for the challenges that came in the year 2020. I don't know anybody that knew exactly what to do. Amen. If you felt lost, so did we. And I don't think there's anybody here that would say, I knew exactly how to handle 2020. In fact, I knew it was coming and I was prepared. Nobody will give you that response. Nobody was prepared. Nobody knew. It was something that we had never seen before. But I'd like to show you something. Just as the ark guided the people of Israel, doesn't God guide us and lead us? And doesn't his word 
give us, again, that leadership that we seek, no matter what the situation is. Again, the people of Israel are passing over this river Jordan. They're, they're getting ready to go through some different things. But you and I in life, as we go through struggle and trial and, and, and different periods of time, God's word has always been that guide for you and I. And though we might not have clear physical instructions sometimes, we do have very clear spiritual instructions. We do have this word, truth. We have always had truth, and we always will have truth. And so when it comes to us following and, and, and us being led, understand this, friend, we always go with truth. The people of Israel were commanded to follow this ark and to keep a space between them. Why? Because they would not been there before. And I'll tell you this, just as we had adventured through unexperienced territory in this last year, 2021 has experiences that you and I have never uh, been to, we've never seen, we've never gone there. There's places that we'll go, and, uh, new heights that will be reached, and, and things that we don't know yet, but God has already planned for us. And here's how we'll make it through, and here's how we'll make it to the other side of that Jordan, is this, is that we follow the word of God. Amen. Just as the people of Israel were instructed to follow this ark, so we will follow the word of God. It says this in verse number five. It says, And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves. That word sanctify, is, as we've talked about so many times, means set apart. Set yourselves apart. Take yourselves and remove yourselves from this world. Amen. Be sanctified. Set yourself apart and worship God. Don't worry about all, all the different things going on in life. Don't worry about the, the virus. Don't worry about all, all the, the, the stipulations and all the things that could trip us up as people, but rather sanctify yourselves unto the Lord, right? Set yourself apart. Focus on God. Even though things might be bad, and, and not all the world is bad right now, I understand, but even though things might be hard, sanctify yourself. Separate yourself. Pull yourself out of that situation and realize God is moving all around us. Realize God is building a church currently, not yesterday, but currently God is building a church. God has souls everywhere that are ready to be saved if you and I are just willing to go. And then it says this, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. You know what I did in my Bible? I underlined the word tomorrow and I wrote next to it, not yesterday. I wrote next to it, not yesterday. The Bible says tomorrow. It doesn't talk about the blessings of yesterday, but he says, but for tomorrow, the Lord will do great things. And I tell you this, friend, God has plans for tomorrow. God has plans for this church in the future, not just the past. You see, we look back at the past and say the church was so great, the church was so grand and so strong, and we had this and we had that, and we had all these programs and all these. Listen, friend, that's wonderful and that's great, but let's build it again, amen? Let's get back to that spot. Let's, as a church, focus and, and get ourselves right, sanctify ourselves, set ourselves apart and say, Lord, whatever capacity you'd have me to serve, I'll do. Whatever journey you'd have me to take, I'll do. Lord, I'll go, I'll follow wherever you would lead and wherever you take us. Because again, friend, I'd remind you, the Lord was not just with Victory Baptist Church in the past, but is currently presently and will be tomorrow with this church. The Lord has a future. The souls that have been saved, we praise the Lord for. The souls that have joined the church, we praise the Lord. The souls that are baptized, we praise the Lord for all of those. But you know what? There's somebody else tomorrow. There's a whole world of people that are existing in the tomorrow that you and I need to reach. And you know what, friend? The Lord has a wonderful, bright future for this church. And we don't know exactly what that is, and, and we can paint pictures, and we can have visions, and I believe the Lord has given me a vision for the year 2021. I believe that firmly. And though maybe things don't go according to plan, I know this, the Lord has his hands on this church. And so here's what we've got to do is get out of the mindset on focusing on yesterday. Yes, praise the Lord for yesterday, amen. Give him the praise that's due, but don't stick and don't get stuck in yesterday, but rather understand and know that as we follow and as we go, the Lord is leading into tomorrow. And the Lord has a tomorrow for this church. I want you to see something else in verse number six. Joshua does exactly what the Lord tells him to do. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know, watch this, that as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Now listen, this is an amazing thought for me. You go back to this transitional time we've talked about this. Moses so clearly, so evidently did God rest on Moses, right? 
You look at scripture and see the miracles that God did. Moses had contests with, with, with the king of the earth. You, you go back to Pharaoh and, and his power seat in that time. Moses had miracles in the wilderness, and Moses had all these things he showed the children of Israel. There was no doubt that God dwelt with Moses. There was no doubt that God was all over Moses. But now, again, I bring you to a time where there's a transition. And now it's moved from Moses. The torch has been passed. That mantle's been passed now to Joshua. And again, as I started with, there's some doubts, there's some things in the minds of the people. Will this thing go? Are we going to sink? Are we going to be left in the wilderness? Are we actually going to arrive where we're supposed to go? Uh, uh, does this Joshua have what it takes? Is the Lord going to be with him as he was with Moses? And here's what God says. I'm going to magnify you in the sight of the people, Joshua. And here's why. That they may know that I walk with you, that I'm with you, that I'm going to bless you the same way that I blessed Moses. And just like I said moments ago, Victory Baptist, Victory Baptist Church has a great past. But I'll tell you this, if God blessed in the past, if we're doing God's work, God is going to bless in the future. Amen. And just like he was with Moses, so is he going to be with Joshua. And just as God was with uh, preacher Bill Allen, praise the Lord for him and praise the Lord for all the souls. In it, so is God going to be right here with this church today. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, friend, we've got to believe that from the bottom of our hearts that God is with this place. You know, one of the, the first things that Pastor Lamb asked me, and I don't, I don't know if he'd mind me sharing this publicly, I don't believe he would, but he asked me, do you think God can bless that church? Now, he didn't ask that because he had any preconceived notions on whether God would or not. He was asking me, watch this, to see if I really believed that God would bless this church. You, do you see how deep that is when you think about it? He was asking me, because watch, if my answer had been no, then why would I go? If my answer had been no, and no, I'm coming into this church with a preconceived notion that God's not going to move, that God's not going to bless, then why would you go? And see, friend, I'll remind you that we've got to go with expectation that God's going to bless. We've got to go with the mindset that the Lord is with this thing. And I'll tell you what, that's the only thing that keeps me going every day. The Lord is with this thing. And I know because he's protected and he's guided and he's led through all the turns and curves and bumps and bruises. And all, he, he's been all over it. Otherwise, this church would have already failed. Otherwise, this church would have already tanked. But here we are again, getting ready to cross into the territory of 2021. And God has been so faithful to this church. So I remind you, I take you back in your minds again to the, the good old days, but, but I also want to want to stop and I want to tie your brain up and take it with me. I want to pull it over my shoulder and pull it right into this next year. And I want you to shift your focus now to what God is doing in the future. What is the next step? What is the vision? What is the future of this church? And here's what it is. It's you and I in surrender. It's you and I in submission. It's you and I sanctified that God can bless this church tomorrow. And so I'll tell you this, friend, again, as we go into this next year, we talked about on Sunday morning, a wonderful message the Lord gave about our vision and what we'd like to accomplish, setting ourselves apart, and, and again, having those, those goals for ourselves. I think as a church, we need to have a goal. I think as a church, we need to set some goals and say, listen, we're not going to just drift through this year 2021, even if we are still in quarantine, even if we are still locked up, or even if things go the opposite way, right? We go back into and, and, and have more restrictions. Even so, I think we ought to have goals. Even so, I think we ought to have a vision for this church. And I tell you what, friends, I begin to think about that, and I begin to pray, the Lord started to give and, and, and provide some area and some, some clarity of thought in some of those different places. And I'll tell you this, friend, we had over 20 people saved this year. Listen, here's what I'm praying for. I'm praying for 75 people to be saved this next year. 75 people. Now listen, I give that number publicly, and here's why I do that. I don't just hide it inside of my heart. I give it publicly to give you charge as well. I give it publicly that it's not my burden, but it's also the church's burden that we're going to go out and we're going to win these souls. And I'll tell you this, 75 in my mind is low. That's low. That's shooting low. But again, I'm going off of this quarantine and some of these things. I think the Lord can do so much more than 75. I've seen the Lord do 75 in one sitting. I'm expecting it. I know he can do it. But here's how he's going to do it. He's going to use this church individual at the individual level. When you're surrendered, when you're submitted, when you've set yourself apart, you're sanctified, given to God. 
I believe that each and every one of us needs to come to the point of surrender in our lives. I'll tell you this. How many live in the was? Let me ask you that. How many live in the was and not in the present? How many live in the God was good or God did this but not yet in the present? Friend, what we cannot do, what we cannot afford to do is live simply in the past but rather realize that God is moving in these moments. Looking forward to the future. I want to give you one more portion of Scripture. Go to Matthew chapter number 9. And and this is a, a portion of Scripture that I've come to love. In these last few months, as I, I found it, I, I, I gave it at a Saturday morning prayer breakfast, and, and ever since, this, this verse has just resonated uh, with me. It's something that, that I can't get off my mind. Matthew chapter number 9 and verse number 25, we're going to go down to verse number 29. I, I want to just read this chunk of scripture with you. Look, look at what it says. Verse number 25. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose, and the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. So the fame of Jesus is now being spread. Verse number 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and thus saith Jesus unto them. Listen to this. Here's the question. Believe ye that I am able to do this? Jesus said, Do you believe that I am able to give you sight? Do you believe that I am able to do What I'm telling you I'm about to do, look what it says. Verse number 28. Believe ye that I am able to do this. It says this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. They responded, Yes. God, we believe you can do what what you're saying you can do. Look at verse number 29. Then touched ye their eyes, saying this. According to your faith, be it unto you. Let me ask you a question, Victory Baptist Church. Believe ye that I am able to do this? If Jesus stood here before us and said, Believe ye that I am able to do this? Believe ye that I am able to bless this church? Believe ye that I am able to guide this church and to take it to its next steps and to lead it through this next year? What would our question be? What would our answer be? Would it be, Yea, Lord? Or would it be, I don't know, this kid works out? Right? If, if this kid, pre- if he keeps preaching out of the Bible, what would our answer be? Believe ye that I am able to do this? Because I tell you, church, Jesus is asking and Jesus is wanting us to move forward. But the question is asked, and here's what he's waiting for, our response. And I want you to notice when they said, yea, Lord, they, they put their faith in Jesus as he always does. Watch what happened. He came through. And then he said this, according to your faith, be it unto you. And I'll tell you this, with your Baptist church, if our faith is small and our faith is little and we don't expect much of God, I'll tell you exactly what will happen. Nothing will happen. The church won't grow very much. We won't have very many visitors. We won't have big outings. We won't have a lot of souls saved. Why? Because our beliefs are low. Because our faith is low. Our expectations of God are, are, are puny. But I'll tell you this, as a small church and as a church that has a great need for the Lord's movement, it will expect and if we'll believe and we'll have faith in God, the Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. And I'll remind you this, no church in America has everything right. Amen. Not one of them is perfect. Not one of them has a perfect pastor. Not one pastor has a perfect congregation. Not one of them has a perfect building. Not one of them has all the resources. Not, not one of them has a perfect situation. But yet we can look and we can see God blessing and God multiplying and God spreading his gospel all over our world. Here's why. According to your faith, be it unto you. In Victory Baptist Church, we can be a whole lot of things. We can be a big church. We can be a small church. We can be a a church with lots of resources. We can be a church with nothing. But here's what I want to be as a church. I want to be a church that has great faith in the Lord and his ability. Amen? Amen. I want to be a church that has great faith in Jesus Christ and his ability to lead this church. We'd be a fool to chalk it up to a man. We'd be a fool to say it was the congregation. No, it's Jesus and his power and his power alone. And I'll tell you this, just as the Bible said, according to your faith, be it unto you. And so the question is asked, believe you that I'm able to do this? What do you really expect of the Lord in 2021? I believe it's a wonderful thing to have goals. I believe it's a wonderful thing to ask the Lord to do some things. 
I think that we need to be praying that souls would be saved. I think we need to be praying that new folks would come and people be baptized. I think we need to pray that this church would grow. And I tell you what, I really genuinely believe in my heart that the Lord will do it. Amen? I believe it. I believe it. In fact, I know God will do. Why? Because it's not my will. It's not your will. But it's God's will that we spread the gospel. It's God's will that every man will come to the knowledge of repentance and accept Jesus Christ. That's his plan, not ours. And though we might have visions and different things that we do, we're drawing according to his plan. Amen? So with that mindset, with that charge, with that thought, with our hearts being focused now, listen, let's go into the year 2021. Amen? Let's go into it, not as... Uh, a scared dog, right? You ever seen the scared dog tails between the legs shaking as he comes up? No, not like that, friend. Let's charge this thing. Let's run into it, right? Hit the ground running our first Saturday outreach. Let's have some people there. Hey, Amen. I'm tired of buying half a dozen donuts. I started out buying two dozen donuts. Now I bought a dozen. Now I bought half a dozen. I let, listen, let the church spend some money on donuts. Hey, Amen. Come, be a part of it. Let's hit the ground running. Let, let's invite visitors. Let's bring people to church. Let's see some souls saved. But listen, friend, you go with the same mindset you came with, nothing will change. But you go being different, you go being changed, everything in the world is possible. My last thought, and we're going to move forward to our vision for this next year, in then the Lord in chapter number four, in the middle of walking through the Jordan, what did God tell him to do? We've been over these verses. We talked about them on Thanksgiving. Remember what he told them to do? He said, pick up 12 stones, pick up these stones and take them with you. And then what does he say? Take them out of the river and then I want you to put them out. What are they going to be? They're going to be memorials to you as you go. And I'll tell you this, friend, the challenges we went through this year are memorials. The things that we went through, the things that God brought us through, those are our stones that we'll look at for the years to come. And we'll say, man, was God good in the year 2020. Man, was God good in the middle of that virus. Man, was God powerful and was God able to move. When the whole world slowed down and shut down, God's church kept going and kept chugging and kept growing, and people were saved. Man, they will be wonderful, tremendous stones that you and I can look at and have for years and years and years to come of God's mercy and God's great goodness. Amen? And so let's go over some of this vision. I believe the Lord has, has given this church a, a vision, and I think that you're a part of it. I'll start with saying that I think that you are a part of it. I don't have to look at anybody in particular. I don't have to single anybody out. I think that you are a part of this vision. I think that you are a part of what God's doing here at this church. Listen, I think that we've got some building that needs to be done here at this church. I think that we've got some, some renovations, some different things that need to be done at this church. I think some of our, our carpet's getting old and some of the different things, our parking lot. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. If you drive through our parking lot, it's like, a, it's like you're off-roading, right? I think that we've got some big things that need to happen at this church. You know what? I think God is big enough to do it with this church. You say, well, preacher, we're just not big enough to be able to. No, 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 friend. You're not, you're not thinking right. No, because for you to say that is say God is not big enough to bless you. God is not big enough to do that. No, God is big enough. And we can do these things. Listen, friend, we need to do some of these things. I think the Lord has given a vision. I think the Lord's paved a path now that we can... Uh, be able to do some of these things, to, to renovate the Lord's house in some small fashions, painting the walls and uh, doing some of the carpet again and some of it's ripped up. And if you ever come into the church and I'm on my hands and knees crawling around, it's not because I'm praying all through the church, because I'm super gluing carpet so that you don't trip on it. Amen. I've done that. I don't know in how many different spots throughout all the church, super gluing all the different pieces down. And uh, we need to do some of those things. Hey, listen to this, friend. I think some of our part departments, our children's department with some of our teen classes and and some of our, even below that, some of our, our grade school classes, we've got a great need for servants. We've got a great need for teachers. Right now, the, the, the children's department is wonderful and praise the Lord for them, but they've got little, 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 little guys in there with fifth graders. And when you try to teach the fifth graders the same things that a, a, a kindergarten or a first grade, man, it gets hard. And so we, we've got some areas there where we need some teachers. We need some folks to step in and say, I will be faithful to serve and commit myself to be a part of this church in whatever role I can be. And listen, friend, don't let that be somebody else. Let it be you, and you surrender, and you say, God, I'm going to step in. I'm going to do that. Hey, listen to this. Our outreach, I just spoke about it moments ago. We, we've got a great vision and a great need for outreach in this church. 
I think that, that our outreach can be so much stronger if people will realize how important it is. I heard a saying once, and I told it to you before, that five seconds in hell would do us better than five years of Bible college. I think that's one of the most true things I've ever heard. If, if you experience hell for five seconds, I guarantee you that you'd never miss a Saturday morning outreach. Amen. You, you'd never go a day not telling somebody about Jesus. And I tell you this, we, we've got a great need for our people to step up and say, I'm going to be a part of the outreach of Victory Baptist Church. I'm going to be a part of seeing souls saved and, and winning souls and going out and, and planting the seeds. We, we've got a great need for some of these departments. Listen, friend, and you are a part of that vision. This year, 2021, I believe is going to be a building year. I believe it's going to be a year of building. I'll give you the simplest analogy because my brain is very simple. I, I, my brain often works through pictures as I see things. And I, I think of a house when you, you get a house and maybe some things are not in row. I, you know, I, I worked on a house and it was a mess when I walked in. It was a mess. There, there was mouse uh, 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 droppings and different things all through the house. And the floor was nasty. The walls were all... Uh, uh, ruined and, and here's what I had to do I had to strip that entire house piece by piece material by material until I got it down to the very basics and here's what we did after that is we began to build back what needed to be in place to put back piece by piece what needed to be a part of that house and I'll tell you what friend we have gone through and we've tried to do our best to, to get rid of all the things that don't need to be or, or all the things as we clean ourselves out, as we stay sanctified as a church, we try to make sure that everything that we're doing in the sight of God is pleasing to him. And I think that now in the year of 2021, that we are ready to build. I think that we are ready to build and to lay those pieces in place and say, God, what is it that you have for us this year? Because we want to grow this church. We want to build this church and make it what you have it to be. And I tell you what, friend, I believe that this year is a year of building. I believe that this year we'll see growth. I believe that this year we'll see the Lord do some great and wonderful things. But again, according to your faith, be it unto you. And so as we conclude tonight's service, again, giving a small vision of what's to come and, and giving you kind of the charge for the year, I would ask you the question one more time. Just because I know what it does to me every time I ask you, believe ye that I am able to do this. And of course, that I is not me. That I is Jesus. That's who's asking that question. Believe ye that I am able to do this. And here's the only acceptable answer. Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Do it, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do it. Be with us in 2021 and build this church. Make it what you have it to be. And again, you're a part of it. So be on board. Amen. Be on board or get off board. Amen. That's what the pirates used to say. Walk the plank, right? Get off. Be on or get off. And here's why. Because we're moving forward. We're going. We're building. We're going to build this church and we're going to see it move forward for the cause of Jesus Christ. Not to attribute glory to any person, but only to him. Greatness is to come. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You stand. Let's pray. Lord, tonight we love you and need you. God, thank you for the many blessings. Thank you for the many provisions that you've given to this church. Lord, we can truly not appoint any success to any man or any woman or any one person. But God, you and you alone can only receive the glory from what's happened here at Victory Baptist Church. And God, especially through the year 2020, you have been so good to us. And you have blessed us in such mighty ways. Souls have been saved. And even tonight, we have new folks in church and, and, and new faces and new families. All that glory, God, is attributed to you. And Lord, I know this. That was just a small portion. That, that was you operating through this quarantine. Lord, you have no restrictions. And God, our faith is great. And God, in the year 2021, we expect great big things out of you. The same God that was literally able to congeal or to hold back the Red Sea and allow those folks to walk through on dry land is the same God here in Batavia, Ohio, that wishes and desires to see souls saved. And God, I want to be a part of that ministry. I want to be a part of those lives being changed in the course of eternity because of your gospel. And so, Lord, I pray that that's the heartbeat of every soul in this church. I pray, God, that everybody would get on board, Lord, so that when you moving, when you start moving this thing, Lord, that, that nobody is out of place, nobody is holding this body back. There's no schisms. But rather, Lord, that we're moving forward for your cause and for your gospel's sake. So, Lord, I ask something special tonight. 
I ask, Lord, that you'd increase our faith. I ask, Lord, that tonight you'd instill inside of us a great faith, knowing what you've done and now looking forward to what you'll do. I pray that you'd give us a great faith, Lord Jesus, in your ability, in your power, in your goodness, your faithfulness. Lord, we understand and we know that you are able to carry us through any situation. So God, give us a great faith. And Lord, just as scripture says, according to your faith, be it unto you. And God, as we have faith in you and expect big things from you, God, we pray. And we know that you'll come through and you'll do exactly that. So we commit this church to you. We commit this year to you. We give it to you. Before it comes, we give it to you. And ask, Lord Jesus, that you would do what you will. Have your will and your way in this church and in your people. In Jesus Christ's most powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Then we have bowed and prayer closed.